I have to admit um, that this has been a really great opportunity and it really has pushed me a great deal. This is what I would call my reluctant moonshot. I really don't want to work on this, but I really think I have to, and I really think we have to. Um, this actually is a video that I shot from a UAS uh, unmanned aerial vehicle um, that I built in 1994. Those of us who've worked in this area for a long time are kind of a little disappointed with what's happened to UAVs in the interceding 15 years. My reluctant moonshot um, is, in short, to use drones, the technology of our time, the military technology of our historic moment, to use those drones to, and by drones I mean targeted killing with UAVs and their you know, ground counterparts, um, to use drones to end the war. Right? to reimagine how we use drones to finish this damn war. This is a rhetorical question. Does technology play a critical role in war? I mean, is anyone going to disagree with me? You know, is anyone going to say that technologies don't provide the strategies that are available to us in a military context? Right? So what is our war? And of course, it's characterized by this very specific issue of targeted killing um, with drones. Right, that is, I don't know how you feel about that. Right? This is actually a study how 268 terrorist groups worldwide ended in a, uh, looking at terrorist groups from 1968 through to 2006. Um, and this is how they ended, right? Not through targeted killing, 43% through political negotiation, 40% by local on the ground policing, 10% by victory, um, and 7% by. This is a recent dissertation on um, uh, my main finding, where is this, um, is that leadership decapitation is not correlated with the reduction of terrorist activities by these groups. This was not, this was three case studies. Organizations that have not had their leaders removed are more likely to fall apart than those that have undergone a loss of leadership. The marginal utility of decapitation is negative, and decapitation is what this targeted killing is called, right? Decapitating the head of the, of the group. The thing is, it doesn't work, right? Targeted killing doesn't work. So I actually wanted to bring up Petraeus, um, and Megan actually had said, really, sh you should have a, a look at his strategies. And I know... There's some titillating gossip about him. We're not going to talk about that. He's worth revisiting. He wrote a dissertation on what we could learn from Vietnam. Um, and it was actually in March, uh, about this time, uh, 45 years ago, that, um, I mean, to characterize the, the quote, um, are, we, uh, are we supposed to kill women and children? Asked a soldier to Captain Ernest Medino in March 1968. Um, and his response was, kill everything that moves, right? So that's what characterized a different war at a different time. Um, but Petraeus, his work was really to look at how we could um, deal with these open-ended networked wars that we face. And his full spectrum engagement, his use of money as ammunition, his commitment to no more Vietnam, um, and this Petraeus ratio, 80-20, 80% of the energy, the military energy, goes into politics, to buying and talking peace, and 20% goes into the kinetic military force, right? So that's an interesting ratio to keep in mind. So could we update the operating system? Our drones are currently programmed with something more like a Vietnam era operating system, right? They can't discriminate the difference between a child holding a gun and uh, an adult or a targeted leader. Um, could we reprogram, could we regroup, oh actually I did want to mention there is one military study I wasn't actually, that says that targeted killing does work. Um, but they, they conflate the data on targeted killing and capture, which is very different. Capture is reversible, killing is not. So let's imagine that we could operationalize that 80-20 Petraeus ratio. So it just comes back to actually the, um, the idea of what we have to normalize in war is that it boomerangs, it comes back, right? The technologies we use, we don't have a monopoly on them. Do we want to normalize 
the use of targeted killing with unmanned aerial vehicles by everyone, right? Not just Americans. Do we want to make that normal? That's the choice we face. So this is actually interesting footage released from the captured UAV from Iran. In fact, what we understand about our military technologies is that um, they come back to us. So the, this sort of a lot of uh, Waldron's theories and other things is about how do we... I'm, I'm just going to summarise it all as I did in that slide. Uh, do unto others as we want them to do unto us. Force does not have to be fatal. Um, arms, an arms race logic seems crazy, but it might be useful. And there's principles of reciprocity and reversibility that we can use to expand what drones are capable of. A kind of a brief summary of the history of military technology in one slide, um, where we arrange our weaponry on a, on a spectrum from, um, you know, on force or harm along the spectrum to no harm, in fact, over to this side where it starts to be doing something more than no harm, right? So if we, at this far end, nuclear warheads, right, or mutually assured destruction of the Cold War era, we have to admit that drones are a step forward from the kind of anonymous warfare that characterized other times. I would rather, it's something to be more targeted, but is it sufficient? Um, so if we go, we start to think about what would our drones look like if they were not only more targeted, if they were not only, you know, 21-year-old Americans facing 17-year-old um, Afghan um, kids, if they were actually started to take them into this quadrant up here where they actually do some good. This is a one step towards this. This is called a, um, a bullet bouncer Baccara that um, was designed by um, a four-year-old boy. Um, <laughs> Yo, just keep going. The BBB gun bounces back bullets. It's a gun that uh, can only fire if it's fired at. Right? So the technology is quite simple here. Through triangulation, you can um, trigger using electronic triggering as opposed to the mechanical triggering. 10,000 rounds per second um, to shoot back only if shot at. Um, so this starts to change the familiar idea of mutually assured destruction into a kind of a nanosphere. And you can imagine if that technology came home, right, used in a military context, if that technology came home to a civilian police force where they could only shoot if shot back, right, how could that change the civilian context and this idea of the neutrality boomerang technology. I want to go back up into this quadrant. Let's start to think about the, what's not targeted killing, but maybe targeted empowerment. Um, and that was actually a term, it's a, a translation of Petraeus's idea. If we spend 80% of our technological energy on constructive work, on nation building, on winning hearts and minds, and 20% on force, and make that reversible force, what could that look like? And I would like to guarantee you that if a, if a drone dropped, um, I don't know, if it dropped a $40,000 package of cash, as opposed to a $40,000 explosive device, what would that change, right? It would, I think, create chaos. It could also, um, if we targeted that, if we identified young, interested, talented people and dropped a $40,000 scholarship to go to a university with a stipend, what would that do, right? This is um, changing the technologies of drones, changing how we imagine them. There are those of us, uh, many of us, outside of the military, and I've actually been trying to talk to the, some military contractor friends of mine about this idea of drones for good, and I can't tell you how <laughs> difficult that has been. They've just looked at me as if, as if it was uh, impossible. But there are, of course, a huge number of people interested in UAVs, building them, 
Um, there's communities uh, in repurposing, reimagining, in upgrading the raison d'etre of, of our robots. These are some examples of, um, of upgraded robotic dogs that have had their, some brain surgery, they've had their mechanics um, changed so that they've lowered the center of gravity, widened the wheelbase, and now they actually sniff out concentration gradients of environmental contaminants, right? So they trace the, um, they display the information with their movement. There is many people interested in reimagining and redesigning our robots, our technologies, our drones. A lot of us interested in, um, you know, reimagining flight um, and UAVs. There is an imaginary air force, if you will. There are people and ideas and minds interested in redesigning, reimagining our, um, our war. It's our war. We are implicated. And in the full spectrum, open-ended, messy war, I would have to add to Petraeus's idea that not only is money a weapon, education is a weapon, Constru reconstructing, redressing the tremendous inequity is a weapon, and perhaps the killer app for drones might not be killing. Thanks. <laughs>